When I was a little kid, by far my favorite video game in the entire world was Super Mario World. My parents were the proud owners of a Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So naturally, me and my brother got to play like all the SNES games they had when we were little kids. Now, my parents might have given the console over to our grandma since then, but that doesn't stop me from playing Super Mario World. Because of modern marbles, like emulators, I can actually play the game on my laptop. Actually, here I'll show you right now. With the power of emulators, I can actually play this game exactly how it would have on the SNES. So, let's just go ahead and, uh, find a, there we go. We just have to find which keys correspond to how you play the game. There we go. You see, it's a little tricky trying to do this if you don't have the right controller. So I'm gonna go through and try and play this. So I guess I sort of can play it with the keyboard like I was right now, but it's a little awkward. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use this. My dad actually happened to just have a USB SNES controller. So I'm just going to plug it into my laptop and then we'll be able to play Super Mario World no problem. Okay, here we go. We're going to plug it in. All right. The controller is plugged in and let's play. Uh, it appears like nothing's happening, so I think it has something to do with Linux. So the whole reason why I actually play an emulator on my laptop, it's actually a Windows program. So normally I can't play it on Ubuntu, which is what my laptop runs, but with a program called Wine, it's sort of like a transition layer. So I can actually run most Windows programs on my laptop. So I'm running the emulator on my laptop, but the only problem is the controller I have, my laptop doesn't know how to, you know, understand it. There's no driver. So if I want to be able to use that controller to play Super Mario World on my laptop, what I'm gonna have to do is write my own driver that can interpret signals from this thing, right? and then put it into the game here. So let's see how we would do something like that. Okay, luckily for all of us, I actually already wrote my driver. So this is the prototype I have in Python. You can use a library called PyUSB, and that gives you access to all sorts of really cool accessing USB devices type libraries. So it's really simple. All you have to do is find the correct USB device based on vendor and product IDs. And I actually wrote a script here, just a few of them, to help you find stuff like that. So we'll go to controller, all this stuff in bash. So we can go ahead and run it real quick. Yeah, so this actually finds all the information of the SNES controller by its vendor ID and its product ID. And so we can find like how many interfaces and configurations and endpoints it has. And those are the sort of like nested access layers of a USB device, I guess. I didn't read through all of USB 2.0 spec because I didn't really have to because, you know, if there's a Python library for it. <laughs> you don't have to read anything. So I just wanted to use Python as the prototype because while it is slow, I did just want to make sure this is feasible. So luckily it all was. So once you have access to an interface, which is probably one of the lowest access points, I think, you can just go through, uh, make sure that the driver is not active. So you just like kind of turn it off, set up the configuration. And then this is the beginning of like my actual code. So the emulator takes in keys like this. 
and I just want to basically take in bytes from the USB controller and then map them into these keys. And I'll get into how the SNES processes bytes in just a minute. Now, in doing all this, the way I actually have it press a key in the emulator is like super just horribly unoptimized. But that's okay because this is just the prototype in Python. And after this, I'll show you guys the final version in C, which is a lot better. So what it does is it calls this program here called Xdo tool. Xdo tool is a Linux command line tool. So if you want to say Xdo tool key X, it essentially just presses X for you into whichever window is open. So I basically just call that sub process from Python. Again, I know horribly inefficient. I call it for every time you change whether a key is being pressed or not. So whenever you're pressing like say the B key, it presses the C button on your laptop. So that actually gets translated into the emulator as you know the B button on the SNES. Those are the controls that the emulator is configured to take in and so on with literally every other button. So my driver here really comes in two parts. The first part, I have to read USB data from the SNES controller. And the second part, I just map that into Xdo tool inputs. I've already explained the second part, so I'll just go into the first part just like real quick. This is literally all the code I have for processing SNES USB input. It's actually pretty simple once you are able to like reverse engineer it. Um, literally all I had done is just read the stream continuously in the command line and then just press buttons and see what changed. And from there I could sort of figure out like, you know, what does each byte mean? So the way you actually access the SNES controller, first you want to read about 96 bytes. I don't know what those mean, but it's like the initial start message, I guess. So you read 96 bytes and then you can start your actual program. So from there on, you basically just read eight bytes because each at each chance it gets, this controller will send the SNES or your computer eight bytes while it's connected. And those eight bytes correspond to which controls are being held or being pressed down at that particular time. So what we have is on the fifth byte, if it's greater than 128, then you know Y is being held down. If it's greater than 64, then B is being held down, greater than 32, A, greater than 16, X. And for some reason, when nothing's being held down, it's at 15. I'm not sure why, but I'm sure it's something to do with like 16, you know, two to the power of the four and that byte. Uh, probably just like to fill it up, but you know, who really knows? So I wasn't one of the people like designed the SNES controllers. So to simplify, I just like subtract by 15 and then whatever's left over, you know, you can go 128, which would be, I think like two to the... What is that? That's not, it's two times 64, which is two times 32, which is two times 16. So you'll never have any ambiguous case if you go in the right order. So you basically just take care of all that. And then the third byte is 255, then you know right is pressed. If it's zero, then left is pressed because those two are mutually exclusive. And if neither of them are pressed, it's like 125 or somewhere in between. And then same with up and down. And then start, select, R and L are a very similar scheme to the these buttons over here. And that's literally all the processing I have to do to figure out how to work with the SNES controller. So now that I've explained my prototype, let's see it in action. Okay, we're saying SNES map is online, so let's go through and try playing a level now. Thank <laughs> you. 
There we go. So finally, I can play a full level of Super Mario World on my laptop with the old SNES controller. Now, the only problem is it was kind of sluggish, the controller was. And that makes sense because, you know, it's in Python. And so before I end the video today, I'm just going to go over my finalized version, the C version real quick, because it's a lot faster. And then I'm going to play one last level in it. Okay, so basically I did all the same stuff with the C version as I did with Python, except I got to use libusb because that's the C library. I think pyusb actually is just a bunch of like bindings to libusb. And then I also used xdo, which is what xdo tool uses. It's like the library version of it. So I don't have to call another a whole sub process every single time I press or release a button on the controller. And apart from that, literally everything else is the exact same. And then I've just got a simple little make file here. Okay, so let's quit the prototype version. Make the driver. You suck! Oh, that's right. That should do it. Okay. There we go. There we go. It'll even tell you when it needs root permissions. There we go. All right, new SNES map is online. And so now I'm going to play one of my favorite levels from the game, which is also, ironically enough, one of the easiest. I'm not, I wouldn't quite say I'm an expert at Super Mario World, but I sure have a lot of fun playing it. And that is basically all I have today. If you would like to check out any of the code I wrote, I'll have a GitHub link in the description of this video. This is actually a project I've been working on for a little while. I just wanted to wait till summer until I released the video on it. I actually started this project a long time before I started my music generator program. I've had the prototype working since like forever. I just wanted to wait until closer to the time I released this video to actually write the C version. And unfortunately, I lost the footage of me writing the C version. Kind of funny how that happens. But anyway, thank you for watching to the very end of this video. If you liked it or if you want to support the channel, please like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on social media, or click the little notification bell. That's basically it for this video, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.